Hello, we're speaking with Ricky Ellison, chairman and founder of Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance. Israel has an operational defense system against ballistic missiles. Do you think that in an emergency that will involve ballistic missile threats, the U.S. will have to send its system to support Israel? Absolutely. Right now, Israel only has the Arrow 2 system that's in space, exoatmospheric, not very far in space, so, and it's got the Iron Dome. So actively, you have gaps between the Iron Dome and space, and from short space to longer space. And that's why the U.S. is here today with their Aegis ships to be able to do one of those gaps. And they have the support capability with the Patriots. When Arrow 3 will be operational, do you think that sending the Aegis missile ships will not be necessary? Yeah, then when Arrow 3 comes in place, then those ships will no longer be needed. Um, they can pull, they can withdraw and do their other activities. They can come in and support as needed if they needed to, but it's not a, a dependent uh, situation that it is today. Iran has recently unveiled a long-range cruise missile. Do you think that the current defense systems are capable of coping with this threat? Well, that, that's going to be very, very difficult because we're going to have to spend our most expensive interceptors on the PAC-2s or PAC-3s to possibly shoot that down. And that's why David Sling is so important right now to get fielded. Now, I know it had a successful test today. It needs another successful test, I think, or two before it can go into production. But that is your answer for that situation, I believe, to handle that cruise missile defense. We have to use other systems that are not designed for cruise missile defense, like the Patriot twos that are in your country that are much more expensive and not as capable. Do you think the Israeli missile defense will always be made of different tiers? No, because you lose, you, you can increase the percent up to the high 90s of having redundancy and different layer gaps because they can design systems in Iran to, that can, can go through those gaps or expose those gaps. So you want to have a system to be able to shoot, to have a 90, 95, close to 100 percent solution for your population, which is what you have to have if it's, it goes nuclear. You, you, you have a no-fail system, so you have to have these layers. When you talk about missile defense in the U.S., do you take into account a situation that a terror organization will launch missiles into U.S. cities? Well, I think the U.S. is really focused on North Korea because North Korea has demonstrated capabilities and are threatening the United States. So that, th their missile defense priority is getting that system completely layered, just like we talked about in Israel, but for the United States. There has been obviously some, some interesting drone stuff that, that's happened in the White House, as you, as you may have known. And we are moving towards trying to be able to, first to be able to track and have a 360 degree coverage of anything moving within, you know, a thousand miles or 500 miles to be able to identify those, those objects. Because right now, some of those objects that are low flying, that are drones, cannot be identified quickly or correctly. So that's the number one thing that we are working for on doing that aspect of it. But to your question, I don't think the American public are as aware of it as they would be here. Uh, they're more focused on the North Korean. The U.S. wants to deploy ballistic missile interceptors in Europe. The Russians objected. What is the status of this program? We are going to move forward with actual 16 uh, SM-31B missiles that will be deployed and active in Romania this year. So that's part of the European phase adaptive approach, phase two. That'll be fully armed, fully capable. And three years from now, 2018, we will have the same capability in Poland. We will have a better, stronger missile, SM-3 Block 2A, that is going to cover more territory. And those two systems, though aren't as coverage-wise as, as strong as the previous one for Bush, will cover most of Europe, not all of it, from that capability. So we have, in fact, moved forward with a missile defense system that's going to protect Europe from Iran. The big thing was that the other one could also protect the United States. So the, these systems can't protect the United States. When nuclear warheads are involved, what is the needed intercept success rate that is needed? Well, it's at least 98, 99, 100 percent. So the key with that is discrimination capability. So you've got to be able to discriminate inside that that debris of threat, which, which you have a nuclear weapon, you might have multiple nuclear weapons, you might have decoys, you might have countermeasures, you have to correctly identify that one piece. Then you have to have an interceptor 
not an explosive one that you have, like Arrow 2, you need to hit it inch on inch, centimeter on centimeter, metal on metal to make sure you kill it. And you have to have multiple shots at it. So you have multiple layers. So you increase your, your capability all the way up to very close to 100%. When we were talking about Israel, which is important, you need to have each a system on each of your levels all the way down to make it close to 100%. And what I'm telling you, you have the Iron Dome at the very bottom, and then you only have the Arrow 2 right now that's in, in, the, in the back small end of space. So you're missing the front part, which is what he's just doing, and you're missing below that space all the way down to, to Iron Dome. So the U.S. is with you to give you that capability today. And we're ahead of the curve because right now Iran doesn't have a nuclear capability that can strike Israel or the United States. So we are working, we are funding you. We, we, as you saw, we've given you $4 billion, U.S. dollars, over the last couple of years for the Iron Dome system. And I think we will do the same for the Davis Sling once the Davis Sling proves itself out to fill that gap. And then the Arrow 3 would be the next gap that needs to be felt. And I think it's important for Israel to feel confident, your, your people, to know you don't have to rely on the U.S that you can rely on yourselves to defend yourself. And it's important for the U.S. to also not to use all their assets over here because there are other countries that are far less advanced than you are that need these systems that we are, most of those systems are mobile that can be applied somewhere else. So it's in the best interest for both countries. Thank you, Mr. Ellison.